Hello, and thank you for joining me today on for today's Wednesday webinar. Um, my name is Tina Souser from ESU8. I'm a technology integrationist there. And today what we're going to talk about is what is new in Google and some other cool stuff in Google. So I would be remiss if I didn't mention that a lot of the information that I get about Google um, is from the Google Teacher Tribe podcast. I like to listen to the podcast and stay up to date on different ways in which to use Google in the classroom and some different um, fun and exciting things that Google puts out. And the Google Teacher Tribe podcast is with Matt Miller and Casey Bell. And they are both educators. Uh, Matt Miller, if you were at the summer's STI, he presented there and did a great job of um, presenting different Google tools and, and how to use some fun technology in your classroom. And Casey Bell is also a teacher. She has a blog called Shake Up Learning, which I also follow and get some really awesome tools and resources and ideas on using Google in the classroom. And Matt Miller's blog is called Ditch That Textbooks that you can also subscribe to. Um, so please check those out, especially this Google Teacher Tribe podcast. And you can um, sign up for those podcasts via Google. You can sign up um, on an Android device. You could sign up on an Apple device. Um, but it's a great podcast to listen to. Okay, so let's begin with the new Google Calendar. So most of you should have noticed that your calendar looks quite a bit different. It's a little more streamlined and a little bit easier to, to, um, to view and to add things to. So for instance, again, I usually keep mine on a weekly basis so that I can see what's happening in, within my week. You have all of your additional calendars over here that you can turn on and off. But what I really like is when you go in to add something in Google Calendar, you have all these options right there on that little pop-up menu. And so you can change the calendar, you can change the event, add a reminder, um, and even see open appointment slots right there from that, that little pop-up. And so basically Google ha Calendar has a brand new um, interface and the way that it looks and it's so much easier and um, user friendly. So now another thing that you might not might have noticed is just that within Google Docs itself, this toolbar has a kind of got a facelift. It looks just a little bit different, um, a little more friendly icons, I guess you would say, just a different look. So within Google Classroom, there is also some fun new features. And one of them that I really like, a couple of them are just very simple features that actually um, are pretty important. So first of all, what I like about this is you can take a class and you can click and drag it to reorder it right on the, your dashboard. So you can put your classes that you use the most up top, um, however you wanna use or however you wanna move those. And so that's a great feature. Then, for those of you who use the code to get your students in your class, which I prefer that way rather than email, what Google has done is if you go into students and you go next to the class code, instead of having to write it on the board, you can now click on display and it'll bring that class code up nice and big for you to project for your kids to log into your class. And so that makes it so much easier and you don't have to write it again on the board. Okay, so now another really awesome tool that Google has is within the Training Center. So within the Educational Training Center for Google, um, you now have the opportunity to do digital citizenship training for yourselves. And so basically what you can do is you can go through Google's courses that will um, teach you skills and give you resources on being a good digital citizenship, good digital citizen that you can then take and um, incorporate into your lessons and also to teach your students. So I really, really love that they've added this to the training um, platform. Then down below that in that training center, you can also take training on specific tools if you wish. For instance, you can go in here to classroom and train on the latest and greatest and all the to tools and resources within specifically within classroom. Um, and so you can click in those and take those courses in there as well. And that again, that's in the um, Edu Training Center within Google. And this is also where you find the advanced training and be, being become Google certified um, and those types of things. So some great resources. Now, 
Google, I mentioned, offered the training for teachers to be good digital, digital citizens, but they have also added the Be Internet Awesome training for kids and for students. And so what this is, and, and if you look at the URL here, it's beinternetawesome.withgoogle.com. And if you go there, this little video will kind of help outline what it's all about. But basically what this does is it will take your students um, in a game-like structure through different um, digital citizenship training courses. Um, for example, Share with Care, this is where they learn um, what they should and should not be sharing um, and why. And then Don't Fall for the Fake, this is talking about different um, situations where things on the internet may not be for real and may be a hoax. Um, secure your secrets. It's cool to be kind. Again, that's addressing bullying and when in doubt, talk it out. So these are some great um, training and for your students as well as making it fun because it's all kind of within a gaming platform. Also for the teachers on that, there's this Be Internet Awesome curriculum. So you can download that and see what it's all about um, and, and see the teacher resources that go along with that. So check out that. Again, it's beinternetawesome.withgoogle.com. All right, moving right along. Okay, so there is another site that, that is titled whohasaccess.com. And if you just type that into a URL, what it's going to do is it's going to ask to have access to your Google Drive, and it will evaluate who all has access within your Google Drive. It also gives you... Um, information about how many folders, how many files you have in there, um, how many peop different people have access, how many different domains have access. Um, it just gives you a great layout of all of your information. Um, you can filter the information then and, and to see what you want to see from that. But I, I train a lot, so I have a lot of um, different people and things in here that I um, don't necessarily recognize, but I could scroll through here and see all of that. And then in my email, it actually sent me a message. I gotta get to my email here. And kind of gave me an overview of the information that it accessed right in my email. So that is whohasaccess.com. So now this tool, this tool is called Flipgrid. And this is not exactly a Google tool, but it integrates very well with Google Classroom. And I really like this tool because it is an, um, a reflective tool that you can send out to your kids and it's free. So basically your kids get a, um, I think it's a 15 second video where they can respond to a posting. Um, for example, you could use this as an exit ticket for your classrooms where your kids explain um, what they learned for the day or you could ask them to explain or um, give you more information on like vocabulary words, things like that. But it's very easily to integrate that again into Google Classroom. So when you click on share, you can share it right through Google Classroom and that becomes your assignment. So if you've never been on Flipgrid, go in there and check it out. It's kind of fun. All right, so within Google Mail now, you have the opportunity to get add-ons right in Google Mail. So if you use add-ons for your Google Mail, you can actually go right here and get add-ons for Gmail itself. And it'll list different add-ons that you could get for your email um, that work specifically with Google, with Google Mail. Now, one other thing is you can now filter your student uh, certain emails to come into a a different tab. See how I have all these tabs at the top? So if I come up here and I fill out this information on a search, once I fill that information out, for instance, if I want all my Seesaw Ambassador um, information to come within a filter, I can type up the information in here and I can create a filter with that, um, which gives me the opportunity then to um, filter, create that filter to match this and um, add um, a different label or a tab to it. So then 
why would I want to do that? Because then I can kind of separate my email so I know when and where to go look for some of the different things. Now, one other thing that I absolutely love, and I'm not sure when this came out, um, but I think it's a great feature for Google Maps. Um, Google Maps now allow you to go in and search planets and moons. Um, the path to get here is a little bit more difficult, so I'm going to go into Google Maps and show you how to do that. So if I type in maps.google.com, it brings me to this screen. What I want to do is I want to switch to the satellite view, and then I'm going to take my zoom out and zoom out as far as I can until the planet feature pops up over here. So you just keep zooming out in that satellite view until you get to this. And so I can click on these different ones to see what the, the surface of those look like. And so I can, can zoom in on that and I can see that from a satellite view once the picture completely loads and I can see what that looks like. Um, and as you can see, they have the International Space Station on here. So if I click to go into that, um, I can see the view from the International Space Station. Um, and I can zoom in and out of that uh, feature as well. So very cool to share with your kids. Um, and especially if you're doing a science unit or a planet unit, um, but you can go into that right within Google Maps itself. Um, okay, and that is all I have for you today. I touched very briefly on some of these things, so if you have more questions on anything that I mentioned today, please feel free to contact me and I'd love to give you more details. You can contact me at tina.souser at esu8ne.org. Thanks for listening and have a fantastic day.